Okay, welcome everybody. We're recording. This is, I'm delighted to have Dennis Shorty and Jennifer Fruley here with us as our next artists in the window. They've been both working hard outside and having a pretty wonderful time despite the weather. Um, I want to start by uh, expressing my gratitude to get to live and work and explore art and culture together here on the traditional territories of the Kwanlandan First Nation and the Tigish Kwan Council. And uh, I also want to thank our funders. Uh, the Arts Fund is supporting the Artists in the Window project. And we're also collaborating with um, Arts in the Park. And so they are actually supporting uh, the demo part of our artists. Um, it's really nice that we have the support from Arts Fund though because it helps us bring people in from the communities which would be hard to afford otherwise. So in gratitude and without further ado, um, I will turn it around and there's a beautiful sculpture by Dennis. And there's there you go. Hi, everybody. And so, yeah, would you like to start off by introducing yourself? Okay, hi. Uh, so, I'm Jenny. I'm Dennis's partner, and I moved like 13 years from uh, East Germany over to the Yukon for the love of my life, Dennis Shorty. And ever since from day one, we're like that, we're a team. So that's why they made me sit right here too. It's like, what? I'm just here supporting and, you know, being here and doing what I do. <laughs> so yeah, that's me, Jenny. Oh, I'm Ben. Born in Bonn. I'm Leaning. Was born out in a bush under a tree. Uh, 13 years ago, like you said, we met. Resident school survivor. And artist, musician, teacher, knowledge keeper, I'm one of the elders in Ross. So that's who I am. <laughs> well, we're awfully glad you're here. Can you tell us a bit about what you're working on out under the tent this week? The first day I was working on uh, jewelry. A lot of moose antler, no, well, actually caribou antlers, making little feathers and working on a project i don't know if i could say it but i'm working on a project that's <laughs> a lot of moose antler and that's what i was doing also engaging covid 19 was <laughs> engaging an audience that stopped by asked me questions so, on the second day i was today i was doing uh, copper copper bracelets pounding cutting well, that's what i was doing you, there were some cool, you had some great visitors today who came by. We had like fel fellow uh, artists and musicians and flute player William Greenland and Kevin Barr, Mark Preston and other beautiful people we met along the okay. way and even come to Ross River where we, where we both live. It's about five hours drive here from Whitehorse and um, it's a very isolated community. It's one of the most remote community in the Yukon. So it's an extra challenging to mingle around with our fellow artists. So we were really, really happy to see them and uh, from a distance and some, okay, maybe not so distance, but <laughs> it's really hard to do that because we haven't seen each other for so long and we're really close together with them. And ever since we're traveling, we traveled with a lot of them together and been in exhibitions or performances involved with them and um, yeah, enjoyed that. And we had a, a young family with two little children. Those the children are very, very interested in Dennis's work and techniques and tools. And so they're very, um, you know, I we hope inspire yeah. them, right? Mm -hmm. To yeah. that they can um, take take over one day the yeah. craft of carving antlers because there's not many out there. So we're trying to encourage our next generations to get into it and keep that tradition. For so them. this piece behind you is also carved from antler. Would you like to talk about that a little bit? Well, that's inspired by my, to honor my grandparents. My grandfather's actually Takish Kwan. And my John's family. Uh, 
from Clark Cross, and also my grandmother is from the Deast Lake area, Taltan, Taltan Nation. So that's an honor to them. So that's why I make that. And it's got brown bear, polar bear, bison. In our language, we call it the Polar bear, sastik uh, alai, we call it. And the story behind those, you know, my grandparents, they travel all over on this continent. They even went up right up to the ocean and tell me stories that when they're traveling around, they had no food. You see all these short animals all bundled up together. My grandfather went over to a bowl, got two kind of smelly. They said they didn't know what it was. It was musk ox. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, they were kind of hungry, so they ate that and they continued traveling across, across an Arctic, I guess. No, no trees, they said. Eventually, they worked their way back down, and that's who they were, the travelers, nomads. Highly mobile people, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. And through them, I learned how to do uh, traditional tools, after the knowledge, carvings, you know, back then, my dad, I was carved as little toys, uh, trucks. Before that, they carved us uh, little animals, little tracks, make tracks on the sand, so different different types of tracks. So could, the teaching, it's a teaching tool. Eh? <laughs> yeah. First, my first, was a bowl, my first uh, toy. Not that long, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's my first toy. And eventually, I went to little snowshoes that I could walk on the snow. Little toboggan, because I bang up mom's uh, wash pan. <laughs> <laughs> got mad at dad. Mom, the mom got mad at dad. And maybe his son's little toboggan, so I made a little toboggan and I mushed around one dog. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> That's teaching. Eh? So I grew up, grew up on the land. Until I was five years old, they took me to residential school. So there were seven years. Yeah. Didn't spoke one word of English. Then I said I go to staff, spoke my language. So that's, that's who I am. That's how I learned how to do all those things. And music. My grandmother sure know how to play the squeeze. What do you call that? Squeeze. Accordion? Yeah. <laughs> My grandmother played that. My dad played the fiddle, guitar, mm -hmm. monica. So that's how I learned, just by watching. And my brother played music. So that's how I grew up. That's my uncle, Joel Ledoux. It's a child's custom dog. My nephew would sit beside me and watch me carve. Yeah, watch him carve. All handmade tools he showed me. Oh, Make it all real bad. Watch me carve uh, animals, little animals. My first carving, my dad, give me a piece of wood. Here, carve something, a little moose. So I carve moose. Here, I give it to dad. Dad, look at it. Ah, the head looks kind of big, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know anything about proportion. He just let me carve, and after when I'm done, he told me what proportion. He carved it down and showed me to make fit fit the body. Mm -hmm. yeah. And while I was doing that, my mom was eating fish. Actually, she was eating a sucker fish on the head bone. There's a bone that comes around, it's shaped just like a moose antler. Here, give it to me. What's that for? That's for horn. <laughs> and she make fish glue and I stuck it in there. That was my moose. <laughs> Collaboration with mom and dad. Teaching. Teachings, yeah. Mm -hmm. Use fish glue to stick that. That was my first moose. I wish I would have kept it. But in all, we move around so much, you just get lost somewhere. Yeah. So that's. It's that's a beautiful story. Yeah. I sure enjoy hearing you speak your language while you've been here. Funny. <laughs> you know, it 
took me a long time to kind of get comfortable to speak my language. You know, I was scared of it because mm -hmm. I was beaten up in the residential school because I spoke my language. They do a good stack. This guy gets a good stack, Christine. Today I speak it really and I teach my partner how to speak. So we have our own lingo, German, <laughs> English, Casca. Secret language. Secret language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now we write songs and the way it started, I start writing songs in English. I was writing song in English about grandfathers traveling across the land and Mahani said, why don't you sing it in your language, Casca? Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> So we start writing in songs in Casca language. I gotta remember, because uh, English is backwards when you speak. So if I speak, then I can, so that everything is backwards, turn around. So I gotta rearrange everything. Because mm -hmm. if I write song in Casca, but it's related to English words, I'll be singing about nothing. <laughs> It wouldn't make any yeah, it wouldn't sense. make any sense because it could be opposite. So I got to kind of like pick my brain, switch my brain to then I thinking. Mm -hmm. so, so nowadays when I carve, I say, oh, we carve it. Because for me, carving is a, it's a spiritual. It's also a, our healing journey. We have a partner. That's what keeps me going. How to push through uh, today's world. Uh, like, I was residential school survival, like I said, but that helped me and helped me deal with uh, issues like our mom was murdered in 1992, she was murdered. Mm -hmm. And that carving and my music, our music, our carving, helped uh, help us deal with it. And some like, some of the artwork you see, it's a collaboration between Mahani and I, she comes up with the idea and I bring it to the next level. Oh, that's all we Ms. Moses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. So we both work together, yeah. It's fun. Yeah, teamwork is teamwork, I think yeah. it's really important, yeah, it's important yeah. to have a strong uh, As partners, support yeah. support net. Not not just in mm -hmm. a in a relationship but in a partnership, mm -hmm. but also where you really you have a lot of support in Whitehorse, that's what we hear, mm -hmm. right? Like the call and mm -hmm. the organizers who made this uh, project happen and so as many other projects because living in a rural community, it's really hard to make a make it as a full-time artist, which he is a full-time visual performing artist. So we all have to work together as one big team okay. and we're colleagues. So, we're, you know, there is no, and we learn all from each other too. So we learn so much while we're here the last mm -hmm. days. That's uh, it's just beautiful to exchange. That's why all the fellow artists uh, come down and visited us too. So that, that's always beautiful. So it's a big, big support yeah, big network. Side. What what we have and the Yukon is just a big, great example of the mm -hmm. community. What what we have and the community spirit that there is and the support what we um, get to be on that level where Dennis's artwork is and his music. So. And we're glad that we could be here. And, yeah. and Dennis is also teaching workshops. Yeah. So now that's the yeah, next maybe, level, right? You said there was so, that special COVID project. Would you like to yeah. talk about that one a little yeah, bit? Talk, talk, talk. Well, we got a little bit of uh, a funding came in to do uh, uh, a COVID project, COVID-19 projects. But that's what we call it. So and that will be three beautiful things. He's working on one tomorrow. If you want to see it, if you have time, tomorrow from 11 to 2. You can see day. one of them. It's the last day tomorrow. So you can come down and, and uh, see that one of the three, what he brought down. So that will be done by September. And we hope there will be maybe an exhibition with it or, or you know, some group exhibition in the future. So, yeah, these pieces are... You've also been teaching through them, right? Before yeah, and we have them um, short yeah. videos on Facebook on uh, Dennis Shorty Arts posted like mm -hmm. like short frequencies like 15 seconds uh, short videos to show uh, the progress of that of the pieces so that everybody can kind of like be part of it and 
and learn and see what kind of materials like from beginning to the end or the finished product uh, like you know what how everything starts not the the hunting the moose or anything so we're, <laughs> we're getting like shattered moose antlers too so and but finding that and then putting the like cutting out yeah, the right yeah. uh, place in the from the antler so we have like four or five videos out there already on Facebook about it's COVID-19 project that's what it's called <laughs> and then you see those little short videos that's like the little progress and then yeah, yeah to share and to teach and yeah. to maybe inspire other yeah. people to do that yeah, so, and the pieces that that's all her idea not, not all but no. that just what she just gave me yeah collaboration <laughs> Inspiration, inspiration, and, yeah, and, ideas, and yeah. well, we talk like mm. we're very creative both together. Yeah. Like, like I said, we worked as a team, and we have always the uh, like our mind is always into creating something and having ideas and and solutions oriented more mm. than you know like more than complaining about things. We want to use COVID nineteen mm. as a positive. And uh, also to teach maybe the lesson what we got with that situation that we are in and using that through artwork, I think it's a really great mm -hmm. idea. So there will be a lot of positive things also coming out of um, our lockdown, isolation, mm -hmm. quarantine, um, what we are in right now. I think there will be a lot of positive things coming out. Oh. Yeah, and we want to inspire people to keep on moving forward, have ideas, be creative, and create because there's still people out there that love your artwork, you know, <laughs> they love uh, your creations, and we have to keep on moving and, and going forward. Yeah, that's what we are focusing on. Can I ask them if they have a couple, sure. any questions? So, um, do uh, Amanda or Natasha, do you, would you like to ask any questions or? Can you unmute yourself to ask? Yeah, I, was gonna, I, I, can, I can ask. Hi, I, I, we, I met you because I was involved with taking the picture of the, of the um, artwork that was in the college bistro um, oh, yeah. with the, the Northern Review. My name is Amanda, Amanda Graham, and I work at UConn University, yeah. previous college. So it's, been, it's really nice that you're doing this. I, I think it's excellent. I'm, I'm in my new house and you are filling this room with, with, with sort of good vibes and, and, and encouraging me to think a little bit less about work and a little bit more about, you know, filling my space with some interesting new things. But what, what I'm interested in is, is sort of, um, it's kind of more of a, just a kind of a general question. I know who you are and lots of people obviously know who you are, but do, do you feel living out there in, in, in the, rural communities that that Yukoners need to know who you are even more you know are you are you do you, do you feel well enough known i guess and if not you know what what can we do to help well you, you could come visit you know <laughs> you could sit, on, sit on campfire and i'll tell you all these stories the history of that area even history of Yukon itself. Now I have all that knowledge passed on to my grandmother, my grandfather, mom and dad, my uncles and aunts. You know, back when I was growing up, the community actually raised me up, not just a family. The community actually raised me up. I could go to my uncles and tell me stories, they feed me, I could sleep there, I feel comfortable. But today, it's not like that anymore. It's just everybody, it, it, it's like a balloon. It poof. Everybody on their own thing, doing their own thing. But back then, that's how I grew up. I could walk around amongst dogs. They wouldn't even bite you back then. That's that's how it was. Today, oh, I'm scared of that dog. I got a bite a couple times already. So. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so your question is, what uh, what you could do as as you can you can well, well, as, as a member of the public even not even as a person working at the university oh, member as a public as a as a person who lives here you know what what should we you're uh, right you're right there in a zoom meeting and you're yeah, yeah. And we're happy to have you there to to be yeah. there i think 
we we are grateful for mm -hmm. for everybody who gives us a smile back yeah. <laughs> and because yes. we're, we're like mm -hmm. just like you we like, get energies from you too also no, it doesn't go only one way we get energies from both of you and from the call and that we take with us what yeah. and we don't have you know we don't have really dennis's works and too many galleries we were just talking about that yesterday because mm -hmm. we wanted to create something that people when they're interested in dennis's work to come to ross river where he I has his own but he has his own little uh, space like his own little sanctuary you know to so maybe if you come up for a drive to ross river and visit us <laughs> that's one thing that will come on down tomorrow that will be excellent to see you guys in ross river so yeah. that we can create that connection mm -hmm. what you when you are interested in dennis's stories or in his artwork or something mm -hmm. to bring you closer and build that relationship mm -hmm. because that's actually what we are about the the networking and being one with the people and coming all together as one people and that's that's what we are yes. about what's his artwork about too to connect to bring good energy to you when when you wear it some people tell them oh my god dennis you're here i'm wearing my medicine bracelet <laughs> <laughs> so they're wearing a nice copper bracelet with the what he made it's not casted so it's all pound by hand cut by hand so that's what he was working on today of one of the medicine bracelets <laughs> so and and when we hear that 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 gives us a lot of good energy and that what keeps us going that's our healing when people are happy and when people are positive and grateful and and that energy exchange that is what brings that, that's what heals us and what keeps us going too you know because there's so much negative out there and trying to not to think about too much sometimes it's right in front of our step like doorstep but you know we got to pull through and we have to always keep up the positive and and uh, they just said the little ray, ray of sunshine yeah. from Ross River. <laughs> we were just told that the other day. <laughs> yeah. so, like, Natasha, do you have a question? We can't hear you, Natasha. Oh, right. oh there we go. There you are. I'm just finding the unmute button. Um, I guess I'm just, I, I find your positivity very refreshing. And I'm really looking forward to meeting you tomorrow when we come by the gallery. Um, I guess my question is about the combination or differentiation between your music and your carving. Um, what, do they like tell a different story or have different influences or what's your take on that? So like those two different sort of genres. For me, it's- I'll put myself Yeah, it's, it's no, it's actually they're connected. Each piece I make, it's a story behind it. You know, uh, like bracelets. Our ancestors used to make that out of uh, horn, sheep horn. Different, it means different things out of sheep horn it's for, you know, purity and all that stuff. It's, it's kind of like, it's a spiritual. Copper, same thing, used, people used to use that long time ago. Music, it's, it's part of that too. It's just that I brought it into the modern technology with guitars and amplifiers. The chanting is there. I use that. We make our own chanting because uh, I can't use some of that chanting because it, it's sacred. So we create our own chanting. And so everybody was happy with that. And we asked our elders in Ross, could we use this chanting? They said, no, no. You could create your own. Okay, so we, <laughs> so we create our own chanting. So, and and, and uh, the way you write songs, it's about stories about our ancestors. You know, right now I want to do that to connect, to connect with artwork and music. You know, a long time ago, our ancestors had trails all over, all over this world. That trails, trails, trading or visiting. And most of it, it's gone now. They don't, they don't use that anymore. 
because modern day technology, planes, you got planes, trucks, and that's lost. And I want to bring that, or connect, reconnect our trails again through music and artwork, visual and sound. You could hear it. So it, for me, music and art is the same. It's a spiritual. I bring it. And that's how we do that. We can't separate it. I mean, it's part of the whole yeah. eh? mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm singing with songs, I, 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 I break down, but you can't hear it. <laughs> I can't do it on stage. No. I have to hold my posture <laughs> and smile and just sing it. So just carry on. <laughs> yeah, just carry on. And That's great. Sometimes, That's great. Sometimes, one time I was singing on stage, my mind went somewhere else. I forgot that I was playing. Wow. <laughs> I was thinking about my grandparents, oh, traveling, traveling oh. across the land. Then I thought, oh crap, I'm singing, everybody watching me. It's a magic moment for the audience. I yeah, think. but you know, all the rehearsals that we've done, me and my honey, my body was doing that. Yeah. My, my mouth was singing those words, yeah. but my mind was somewhere else. I was out there. Mm. And I came back, holy crap. I look around, <laughs> goosebumps, goose pimples, whatever you call it. <laughs> I told them afterwards, I told them afterwards, because uh, some people did recording, at the end I said, Dugu Jaw, that means, oh, what happened? <laughs> if, you, if you hear me say that, that means I have an out body experience right on stage. Wow. Dugu Jaw is a secret Jaw, what happened? <laughs> See that <laughs> experience. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, and I think uh, where the teachings and the workshops yeah. they come in, coming into that too, yeah, same like same. passing that on to the next generation or to people who want to learn, it's really important and part of us to to bring that forward to people who want to learn, right? And that's yeah, really and, important. And just to live that lifestyle, you know, I lost that through residential school, but. Slowly, I'm, my mind starting to like a Rubik's cube, eh? starting to line. Everything starting to line up. <laughs> it's not there yet. I think the one color is, it keeps not two colors and not lining up. So, <laughs> 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 so you know, slowly coming back all that traditional stuff. Even just going out providing my dad. Pray over everything, even his gun bullets. He d doesn't go out. He asks permission. He asks our ancestors for the permission. Our relations, our relative. He does that, and he hang it long ways from where we live. He tell our kids don't go near it. So listen, we don't do that. Eh? So that's how that's that's how we lived long time ago. And I want to bring that back in my honey. Just to live as human beings on Mother Earth, not fight over little things. Just, just, just to love one another. Even the animals, that's our relations, eh? That's, that's how they lived long time ago. Talk to the birds, they trip away at you. If you don't understand, you just walk by. To actually talk to you, you, you listen carefully. I'm talking here. The annoying, not through your ears. That's all, that's all you hear. <laughs> but you feel it. You know what they're talking about. They look at you. Animals, dogs bark. You know they look at you. Do you know? It's by the body language, birds, animals, trees. You listen to trees. When it's wind, you know when it's blowing. And, when it pollinates, you know, oh, you know, <laughs> just, you know, all these things. That's, it's really important for us, I hate to say it, but as a human species to survive, yeah. you have to love Mother Earth and be one with everything, with the universe. In order to make it. Yeah, in order to make it. If we don't, but Mother Earth is going to say, hey, get out. <laughs>
It would be wonderful. Yeah. We could keep talking all night, but I want to keep the video short yeah. enough for okay. for right now. But hopefully, you guys will get to have a visit tomorrow. And uh, okay. <laughs> three hours talk tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't say it's it's July twenty third, twenty twenty. In case someone is seeing this video, oh yeah, sometime in the future. <laughs> Thank you, Tomorrow. Natasha and Amanda, for coming. Thank and uh, I'm go actually I'm gonna stop the recording. Awesome. And then we can.